started. Let's get it started. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I decided to include Adobe Bridge into this workshop, although strictly speaking, it's not a photo retouch or editing software. Adobe Bridge is a digital asset management application, and I personally use it and recommend it because in my work as a graphic designer, web designer, photographer, strip dancer, I end up using a very wide variety of um, Adobe Creative Suite products such as Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere Pro, and the likes. So I want to be able to organize my assets, whether it's photos, videos, text files, wireframes, logo files, etc., under one system. And that's really important for me. So that's why I use Adobe Bridge. But your needs may vary depending on whether you do pure photography or if you already have a system that works for you. But what I want to cover in Bridge is also very important uh, for the post-production process as a photographer. So I'm actually not going to recommend that you skip this part, although you should never be skipping anything in my videos, unless I'm talking about my striptease background. You can skip that part because it's quite long. Whether you use Finder, Lightroom, or Google Photos, <laughs> Uh, you should have some kind of system and prepare to stick with it. Photo organization is as important to a photographer's career as the taking of photos itself. I can't emphasize that more. I personally have a system that I've used and improved for over 10 years now. It saved my ass multiple times. When speed was crucial or if a client was on set and I wanted to appear and be professional or if I needed to find a particular photo and edit from years back. Yes and no, depends on what kind of photography you practice or what kind of clients you have. Do you foresee a chance that your client will call you in five years? Is the content evergreen like that? I deleted my uh, the raw files of my outfit photos like seven years ago. I know that nobody wants to see that shit again. Uh, I know the client doesn't want to see that shit again. <laughs> this is once again why the organization system comes in handy. When you clean up and reduce your batch of files as soon as possible, at the end of the day, it's not even that much gigabytes. In this day and age, big storage hard drives that aren't even that hard to come by anyway. So I'd keep everything and back up, back up. You have to 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 back up. <laughs> so the most stupid way of losing out on income is when a client comes to you asking for a photo taken three, four years ago, and you can't either find it because you had a bad file organization system or you didn't have a system or because you deleted it. That's bye bye free money. When you load up Bridge, this probably is your default workspace that Bridge will offer to you. I'm just gonna stay in Essentials. Uh, you wanna see Favorites and Folders up here in this tab. You wanna see Filter Collections in this tab. Don't need to worry about Export. And Metadata and Keywords on the right side here. So I've prepared this batch of files. Um, this was shot just a few days ago and I actually wanted to focus on studio shots because I know how much a difference you can see. I have a few other photos, faces, portraits, and maybe something more landscapey to show you that the same techniques can be used in uh, for any photo. With Adobe Bridge, what I'm going to do is teach you how important the file organization system can be. I like to take three steps. Step one of the system is weeding out. I like to call it weeding out because this is when you get to cut all the unnecessary in your folder. And this could be things that are completely out of focus or something that doesn't work contextually. Maybe a bus was um, passing by in the, in the front. And yeah, these are hard no's. Start with the very top. S enter space and you'll be able to preview the photos in full screen. Use your arrow keys to go left and right. And what I'm gonna do is for things that are hard no's, I'm going to delete. And this is a hard no, so don't delete things that can be a maybe. Look at this, this is two very similar images. I don't need both of them. Uh, I'm gonna delete one. Yeah, don't worry terribly about exposure, colors, anything like this. At this point, you're really just going with whether you like it or whether you don't like it. I'm gonna delete that one. Um, 
I'm actually going to leave this photo, although obviously because this is when the studio flashlights didn't trigger, I would delete this photo normally, but I'm going to keep this photo for a demonstration much later on. So let's see, maybe I could delete, yeah, one of these guys. Be careful not to delete things that are similar in nature, but potentially usable. That was so fast and I just went through 60 items in that short of a time. So step one is done. Step two is maybes and hard maybes. So I'm just going to focus on the photos that are in my, my white bag scene. You want to press command B on your keyboard using your left, right and down key. I'm going to push down certain things that I know that won't work, but I do not want to delete. This one's quite similar. I'm going to prefer this hand position. So I'm just pu push that down. Pushing it down doesn't mean that you're deleting it. Pushing it down means that you are getting rid of it from your collection. And I think we're good. And basically once you're done, click on this little icon and you'll see that the ones that you did not push down have been placed into a new collection. And I'm going to call it Ikebana Prelim. And then go back to your main folder one, one more time. And then let's work on the second scene. Okay, Command B again. And I'm just gonna do it really quickly here. Okay, once I'm happy, and because it's a carousel, you're free to go around it as many times as you need. You can add it to a new collection. You can make a new collection. Within one project, you might want to have multiple collections, especially if you have lots of different scenes, then you might want to open up a new collection. But what I want to do is put these photos into the same collection that I made before. So once you've selected the ones you want to keep, and push down the ones that you wanted to reject, just hit escape. Yeah. You'll see that in Bridge, uh, you will only see the ones that you've approved and the ones that you've pushed down are not selected. Just pull this guy into the prelim collection. Yeah. And if you click on that, you'll see your collection has now grown. If you wanna get rid of something, you just need to click on it, remove from collection, and that's as easy as that. Back to this. Uh, third scene with the Kala lilies. Escape. As you see, the rejected files are just not selected and then included into the prelim. Now you see in the batch of 60 items, and this could be 600, 6,000 items. After a while, you'll notice how quickly you'll be able to get through this process. So the 60 items are now whittled down to 34 of your best selections. Now, once you have your maybes, this is when you should batch rename your files. It's a better system to name only the things that you are confident showing the client. So those will be your maybes, right? Uh, so going back to collections, select all by pressing command A or control A if you're on a PC and then right click batch rename. You'll be able to see how quickly and easily you'll brand your files. I generally rename in the same folder, but for this, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to copy it, copy it to another folder. So in this drop down, you'll be able to see what kind of text displays on your string of uh, file name. I like to start with Shinny Park, underscore uh, Ikebana Prelim. Here you can see that you can drag it up and down as well. Start from sequence number one. Keeping it at four digits mean that your file names can be from one to 9,999. Make sure you don't have it set at two digits because that means your file numbers will be named one, two, three, four, all the way up to 99. And then after 99, it'll go back to one, bracket one. You can see the preview, how long your fi file name gets and how many files will be processed. If I had a client that wanted to keep these original file names, uh, I would simply just add something like preserved file name in here. For instance, if you were sharing these files with uh, another photographer and the photographer just gave it to you in this kind of format, 
but you are adamant that you wanted to add your branding into your file names, what you would do is you would apply your system and then keep the preserved file name here so that the other photographer can also keep track. And rename. See, there's a new folder called final and it took less than five seconds. The last step of your file organization is to give it a rating system or a label system. You can do that easily by going into your first image and pressing on spacebar so that you toggle on the preview. And in your keyboard, you'll either use one, two, three, four, five to give it stars. At the bottom, you'll see that this photo has now been allocated five. If you want to cancel it, just press zero. Yeah. Or you can use a colored label system by pressing on either six, seven, eight, or nine. And to get rid of the label, you just have to click on that number again. You can also use stars and labels. Red might mean that the creative di director loves it, but uh, eight might mean that the photographer loves it. It's a system that you decide yourself, and that's the beauty of Bridge. Right-click, sort by rating, and you'll see at the very bottom, you'll see only the, the ones with stars now being collected.